Yeah. It's that time. Hey. Culture time. Yes. Uh, my dog brought up a good topic uh, last time he was here. Uh huh. He talked about unexpected. What is it called? You guys say it, dog. I got you. Uh, uncommunicated expectations. Uncommunicated expectations. And so we thought it'd be good to try to help you guys. Uh, we know it's cuffing season. Talk that talk. Not for some. It's still cold for your boy Bake, but it's all good. I got heaters. I got heaters. Oh, yes. That's some hand warmers. I got like I got heaters uh, or whatever the case may be, and it's keeping me warm at night. Um, but anyway, man, tell the folks what is uh, unexpected uh, communication. Um, so I'm in this uh, marriage group. I like that. That's dope, bro. That's dope. Us uh, five married couples. Five. Shout out to that. Yeah. Uh, we meet, we meet uh, once a month as a as a group. Each uh, married couple has a yeah has a has a weekend or whatever a day to do throughout the month, right. each month, or whatever the case is. And so when me and the wife had our uh, month in August, we had a game night, and the biggest thing was about communication because the couples was competing together, and they had to do certain communicational things. And so, you know, leading up to that, I had seen different things on the Internet, but one of the biggest things that stuck out to me was uh, uncommunicated expectations. Gotcha. Because in relationships – you tend to get comfortable enough to figure like this person knows exactly what I'm thinking. And this person understands that if I feel this way, that you should be able to do this. Or when things happen, you're supposed to be able to do these kind of things. Or when something's bothering me and I'm not speaking to you or I'm acting a certain way, you're supposed to know what the hell is wrong. Mm. And that's just not fair. Um, and so we go through these different levels of never really communicating what we want from somebody all the time. Okay. We just say a lot of surface level things, but sometimes the issue be deeper than that, and we just kind of want that person to figure it out. Like, well, you know what's wrong. No, the hell I don't. Mm. You know what's missing. No, the hell I don't. Because if I knew it was wrong, more than likely, I would probably try to solve it. If I knew it was missing, more than likely, I would try to probably fulfill it. Mm. But we get into these moments and these situations, and that comes with just, if you just move past relationships, that comes with anybody. Yeah. Where we just expect people to just know. Or we place these expectations on people, but we never really communicate what those expectations are coming from our standpoint. And then that's when you run into that problem. Mm. I feel it. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff right there. <laughs> no, that, that's a real good stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping the beat. Like, I, I, I feel like um, speaking of the, the the unexpected or just communication in general, uh, y'all definitely should check out the Nia Long and Jeezy uh, uh, interview that they did, which was a powerful piece for, for my black culture, for the black women and, and black men, uh, and just people in general. Um, I think it's tough. Mm-hmm. To communicate because it requires vulnerability. Ooh, I like that. And it requires accountability. Ooh, I like that too. Because first of all, to communicate something, you have to be vulnerable enough to tell somebody something's wrong. Mm. Right? Because we expect that we're supposed to read people's minds and know what's going on and assume, like, I think something's wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of just saying that hurt, mm. what you did hurt me. I didn't like how you said this. I didn't like when you did that. Right. And then the, the hardest part from that is accountability, you know, because pride gets in the way with a lot of this. And we like, oh, I didn't do that. You tripping. I didn't even mean it like that. And then we try to knock off or not acknowledge what the person is actually feeling. And we kind of like, you know, dodge it like you tripping. And then that's, that's one seed. And then it happens again. That's another seed. Then it, then it happens again. That's a third seed. And then eventually it becomes a big tree of trauma. And problems. And problems and hurt and pain and rage. Because mm -hmm. usually... When the tree grows and it overgrows and it's overstimulated, pause, because it just sounded bad, Yeah, it falls. It does. It's the branches start hanging, a little wind, and come knock a branch off because it ain't the root. It's not on strong tree. ground. Ooh. You, you feel what I'm saying? Ooh. You feel what I'm saying? And I feel like unexpected or uh, uncommunicated uh, yeah, yeah, expectations. Uncommunicated expectations. A lot of us do it because 
we don't like to talk about our problems because think about it, man. What did we see our parents do when they was going through problems? Well, my parents went together, so my mom would talk out loud. See, my mom, she was just talking about my dad. Well, look at me and get mad at me because I look like him. But but you get what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Anger. Yeah. Rage. Mm-hmm. She didn't get to articulate that to your pops. Mm-mm. So then I guaranteed as you grew up, you started to inherit it some of those principles and characteristics. When you and your wife have issues, you probably was doing some things that you learned from moms. Like um, to to piggyback off that, uh, with me, it was it's twofold situation. A, my mom is very aggressive in her mannerisms, right? Mm-hmm. And my dad is more chill and laid back. Mm-hmm. So I took I became more like my dad when it came to to dealing with my mom at times. Because I realized it's, it can't go back and forth with her. Because she just go stand her ground. As I got older and matured, and then I got to school, I went to school for communications. And so the thing that I told my wife is this relationship would never fail because we lack communication. Right. Because I would be doing myself a disservice of something that I actually studied and understand the importance of. Right. So one of my strengths in our relationship is communication uh, because I feel like that's what that's the only thing we stand on. I think where I have gotten better at or it can still growing at is how I'm communicating and the words I'm choosing and when I'm saying it and how I'm saying it. You know, because she's came at me before about how I talk to her. Gotcha. And I don't disrespect her and she'll say that. But it's still like my verbiage and my mannerisms because I feel like sometimes I wait till I'm already pissed off yeah. to kind of like say how I feel versus right. m- not necessarily saying the moment because you can't always want to pick it. You want to pick and choose your battles, but yeah. communicating in a more calmer sense right. because then my, my verbiage will be better. Right. And so that's where I'm continuing to grow and be better at because how I speak to my wife at times and how I communicate, how I'm feeling at times, you know, and right. like I said, we have great communication. We have great things, and we'll fall off for a little bit, but we'll pick it back up because communication is our foundation. Mm. And that's and that's the biggest thing that we was talking about in that group when me and her was expressing that we've gotten better at and we're continuing to improve right. in doing that because just because you married don't mean you know everything about one another. Just because you married don't mean that the other person – is a damn mind reader and y'all have telekinesis Talk. and I'm all in your brain and Talk. you're in my brain and I can sit there and be like, you know what the hell I'm thinking. Talk. You, 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 you know why the hell I'm mad. And they probably don't. Yeah. They have an idea because you know when you've messed up. Right. right. Like, you know that. Right. But sometimes you'll do you something. You really don't know. Some, you'll do something in the morning because she's does it in the morning. I'll be like, Cause, man, like, I'm and, and she don't even know what she did. She didn't know what she did. And in my head, you think she know what she did. And it's been flipped. <laughs> I've done stuff to her, didn't even know it. But I've done something. And the thing is, is you've done something that has been talked about. Talk. Right? Like, don't do this. Right. And then you've intentionally or unintentionally did that. Right. And you have set this person off. You set them day. off. Because they're looking at you like, why the hell did you do that again? Right. Instead of when it happened. Just say it. Be like, hey, like why? Right. Like, why what? Like you just did this again when we talked about you not doing that. 100%. And you like, oh, well, I didn't. And then what you said, accountability. Right. What do we do? We get defensive. No, I didn't try to do that. That wasn't. No. Whoop de whoop de whoop. Right. And I'm like, and you know, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. All I'm just telling you right. what you did. And so that becomes a part of the problem. No, real, real talk. I, I, here's my thing. And, and, and I want to try to heal some people today. I truly feel that a lot of these problems come because we're used to specific patterns and used to specific habits. Tra- but it comes from trauma. Let's right. Speak on that. And so. And so these patterns that we learn are from childhood, mm-hmm. are from past experiences, mm-hmm. and we never deal with those patterns. We never deal with those traumas. We never deal with those issues, and then we bring them into a new relationship, and then this is what a lot of people say. And I had this debate with an individual, and I said, they, they said, I'm not like that. I don't usually don't do that. And I said, that's cool that you don't do that, but when you say, what, what was the, I think the, the conversation was, 
I don't open up to people. That's not who I am. And I said, you won't know if that's who you are until you actually try it. <laughs> and then if you try that's it, you can, and then after you that's try it, you can literally say, well, that didn't work for me. I'm usually better off of being more reserved, being more to myself, and then eventually, gradually. Mm -hmm. and, and, and here's my thing with people. When you get into relationships, you're like, I don't do that. I, I, don't, I ain't never cooked for no man. Uh. I I ain't never opened up the door for no woman. Uh, I I ain't never folded no clothes. Yeah. And then we get into this prideful thing like, bro, what, what is that? Do you love this woman? Mm. Do you love that man? Mm. Though these are things you're not accustomed to. If you want to make this situation work, and that's what they love, that's their love language. Ooh, talk to you're gonna have to make sure you make some sacrifice because that's what a relationship is. Yes. And so when you're having these problems. And you don't want to talk about it because you're not used to talking about it. Mm. And you're scared because, number one, you got to be vulnerable. I mean, And number two, you got to take accountability. Because the people that is vulnerable, mm. when they take an the opportunity to take a risk to tell you how they feel, yeah. the last thing you want to do is say, you tripping. The last thing you want to do is say, it didn't happen that way. Yeah. Acknowledge what they feel and how they feel. Mm -hmm. And then say, I apologize if it came off that way. Well, but that wasn't the way that I intended it. But mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And I promise I'll do better at making sure I'll be more accountable of doing certain things that may have triggered you. Well, and then that, that creates another relationship bond that mm -hmm. you can say, I love my marriage. I love my partner. Because when I talk to them, they hear me. Well, mm, that boy, that, listen, that boy they preach. They hear me. And, I, and bank, to your point. We have to learn how to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. There it is. That pro everything that you just articulated is yeah. the fact that we're comfortable with right. not opening up. Right. Because I'm comfortable in that. There it is. Talk. You feel me? Talk. I'm comfortable in not doing the things that I have normally don't do. Talk. Because it's so easy to be comfortable. Yes. We live in a very comfortable society. Exactly. And the minute you ask somebody to do something to be a little bit uncomfortable, they push back. Yeah, they do. And that's what that's why people don't grow. Yeah. People can't grow because you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't become a bigger tree right. just being comfortable. Amen. You have to learn that being uncomfortable Talk. needs to become the new comfortable. Got to be. Because you have to learn to expand your horizons. Yes. You have to be okay with things not going your way and you trying new things. How are you expecting to get yourself into a relationship right. if you're going to be the person that say, well, I don't want to open up right now. Yeah. But do you meet somebody that's very open? That's not going to work out. Talk. You got to meet people at their level. Talk. You got to meet people at where they're trying to go and where you're trying to be. It hasn't worked for you. Talk. So why not change? Talk. <laughs> so, Tough. people need to fully understand that Tell them. uncommunicated expectations yeah. are not going to get us nowhere. It's and this not. goes from relationships, friendships, things with your parents, yes. things with your kids. It's everywhere. Everywhere. The biggest thing that, I, that me and my wife have started to adapt is I am no longer Tell them. placing uh, expectations on people. Beautiful. What I'm doing is placing requirements. In order for you to be in my space, here are the requirements. Talk them. And if you don't meet said requirements, I don't need you in my space there it is. respectfully. Respectfully. And that's just it. You're not meant to be in my circle. You feel me? Like with my kids. It ain't no expectation that you got to have a 3.0 you got to be a good kid right it's required that this is what you need to do right. because if you don't do what you need to do then i don't have to do the extras that come with parenting man and that's that's up. That's just what that is said three four five no, I, no it's not oh, i'm just saying you, i'm about to say like, I'm, you're required to work your butt off to get the best crave if to I be who, yes we i get you. you know who you know who people are don't set the bar low we're not setting nothing low. Yeah. You're going to you're going to have to get here. And the requirements to be here is this, 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 and this. Yeah. I don't have to expect you to be there because you already know what that is. Yeah. So just go be there. Go and be that there. goes through with anybody. Yeah. You feel me? Not just my kids. 100 percent man. But at the end of the day, family, for my folks that's trying to get in any type of relationship, talk about it. It's uncomfortable. 
number one, I, I respect the people who try. And number two, the people who are hearing them out, they have to listen and acknowledge the pain, acknowledge the trauma, acknowledge the issue. Don't throw it under the rug because what you're doing is you're putting Band-Aids on deep-rooted cuts. Mm -hmm. And eventually, they're going to bleed out. And eventually, you're going to have a, a, a outbreak between the man and the, and the female, whichever, whichever situation or, you know, I don't discriminate, partners, whatever. I'll just say partners. You have an outbreak between your partners because you're not communicating and you're too prideful to take accountability for hurting somebody. Mm -hmm. We can say, you're too sensitive. No, that hurt. If it hurt, it hurt. Yeah. Regardless if it don't hurt you, yeah. it hurt them. Facts. So talk about it rather than try to be mind readers. We're not meant to be mind readers. We're meant to be intellectual lovers. We're meant to be intellectual people to talk about issues and talk through our problems. And that's why the world today is in so much pain, so much trauma, because we can't talk about it. And then when we do talk about it, then we're looked at as crazy. And then we don't want to talk about it. Then we go back in this ball and we try to deal with it by ourselves. There's a lot of issues going on. And I ain't going to say toughen up. But what I'm trying to say is make the start to start doing the tough work. Mm. That's what I'm going to tell you. Mm. Start doing the stuff that's uncomfortable. Because once you do that stuff, you're going to become comfortable yeah. in a lot of situations. But y'all let us know in the comments below, yeah. what are some unexpected or uncommunicated expectations that you probably had yeah. in your relationship yeah. and what are some things you want to work on to try to stop those things Facts. yeah but we love y'all uh -huh. we appreciate y'all first I want to give a shout out to my dog <laughs> on this four year anniversary look a lot of times people don't acknowledge love man and we so so quick to love don't exist love ain't real love ain't this love ain't love is out there you just got to follow the people who are fighting for it because there are a lot of people in this world that shows you what love and the representation of love looks like. The needy, greedy, the ugly, the beautiful, all that stuff. So I want to give a shout out to my dog about to hit his fourth year anniversary, man. That's a big deal, dog. It is, man. It's, 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 it's crazy just to look at um, overall because, you know, we especially right now, man, we're going through a very trying time yeah. with the, the passing of my mother-in-law. Yeah. Um, and you know, like when you say these vows, uh, for better or for worse, yeah. people tend to put that as just like you and your partner having different issues and right. infidelities and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you know, for better or for worse is everything that comes into that. Yeah. You feel me? And going through different struggles and different tragedies and different lost and all that, like, you know. Since 2019, once we said I do, it, it has not been the greatest thing ever. And it, between us, it's been good. But for the most part, it's been so many outside things that's tried to, you know, right. you know, mess with us. You feel me? And, like, one of the things that I saw is, like, the devil loves playing in this playground. Right. He looks for ways and opportunities to to step in and, and rattle the fence. Right. And, you know, our faith has been strong. And, you know, that's what's been guiding his marriage. 